Tesla has a semi for truckers. Hmm, probably could have worded that a little better. Uh, welcome, everybody. This is the uh, Friday live version, unless, of course, you're catching it uh, Saturday on the main channel on My Tesla Weekend. It's whichever version you see on the screen. So, yeah, the big news. Don't know if you heard. Tesla, the future of semi-trucking. Elon has announced uh, December 1st is the official delivery date. And by official, and by delivery, and by date, we mean um, Pepsi is going to take possession, legally, of the ones that they've already had, it seems, with a confirmed 500 miles of range. So that's pretty good. Pepsi will take delivery. 500 miles of range, Class 8 truck, fun to drive. Now, mind you, <laughs> this was supposed to enter production in 2019. So we're a little late. <clears throat> yes. Yes, CNBC, thank you. That's what I wish to do, is tweet the number 2019. Very, very clever. Timeline has slipped a number of times. So we do have some things that we know, and we have some things we don't know. This, the truck is expected to cost 180. No. No, that's, that's not correct. That's what we used to know. So we know the date, December 1st. We know the range, 500 miles. We know the customer, Pepsi. Uh, but what we don't know is the actual price. Because 180, I'm going to tell you right now, that's not going to happen. We don't know the weight. Hopefully not insane. We don't know the which factory. Oh, it's going to be Nevada. It's the only place. It's where they've been building them. And it's the only space they have available right now for it. We don't know which batteries, which I would say is going to be the uh, 2170s to launch and 4680s as they become available, but I could be wrong on that. And then the question I've seen asked a number of times without an answer is, will it have the autonomy suite? And I'm going to tell you the answer is yes. Yes, because if for no other reason than they want the data and the ability to convert them into more autonomous versions of themselves as soon as possible. So that's all great. But you know, they're not first to market. That would be Nikola. Nikola has already sold, what, 50, 70 units as of Q2. We don't know the number for Q3 yet. We'll find out, I assume, later this month. And uh, yeah, uh, they're getting out on the road. Range of 350, not too bad. Charge time of 200 minutes, which is a little bit misleading because you don't go from 0 to 100, you go from 10 to 80 or something like that. So let's look. Yeah, they're still projecting 300 to 500 this year. And the bottom line is they will sell everyone they make. They've already sold all that they have made and more with more reservations waiting to be filled. So let's look at the competition. Because the question is, if this Tesla Semi comes out, is it going to crush the competition and it depends who the competition is expected delivery 2023 even though we're going to see some deliveries in december i think 2023 is still fair for everyone who isn't pepsi charge time to be determined elon has said 30 minutes to get from 20 to 80 percent we shall see that would require a tremendously large charging system which they have a 1.5 megawatt charging system Maybe it's enough. So then you've got the E Cascadia from Freightliner. 250 miles of range, not too bad. 80% in as low as an hour and a half. I don't know, fine. Going to Walmart. The Volvo, 275 miles, good. And these are serious, quality, real companies. And then you've got the Kenworth and Peterbilt, 150 miles of range. Well, there are applications where these work, running around town, I guess, but that's, that's a short range. That's a short range, but it allowed them to move quickly, I suppose. Then we've got BYD with its range of 167, depending on how it performs, it'll sell fine, currently in operation. And the tray, which is uh, expected delivery, they've been delivered. Charge time 10 to 80, there it is, two hours. Again, these are not for everyone. 
if you're a trucking company, you know your routes, you know what you need, and you know if this works or not. Fuel is very expensive. The maintenance on a diesel truck is very expensive. These are real obstacles. If for some reason this really is a 500 mile range and it's cost competitive, the use cases are more. You'll get more use cases out of it. It's interesting. This could be 500 miles of Tesla range where it's actually 300 miles or it could be 500 miles. Now, a lot of people have said, well, what about when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're really loaded down, you lose a lot of, a lot of, a lot of range. And that's not actually true. It's mostly the wind resistance that does that to you. That's what you need to look out for. The cost. We kind of need to talk about that. So Nicola Trey approved for up to 185,000 per truck in New York. And there's a similar incentive in California that's 120,000. So when we're talking about the price, especially Tesla, it's the biggest unknown. They're not gonna be under 185,000 if the incentives are 180,000. You're not gonna sell it for less than the incentives, otherwise every single truck would go to New York and they would all be free. Even at 120,000, if they were really 180, 60 grand for a truck, you would sell them faster than you could build them, no matter how many you could build, until the pool of incentive money is gone and it would disappear real quick. And there's also the federal incentive. What is that? 40 grand for a truck, 60 grand? But all those things will make these more affordable. So let's look at the E-Cascadia. What's it gonna cost? I'm here to tell you, it's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be double or triple. I think I've got that over here. The Class 8 Freightliner E-Cascadia will go into production in late 22. While the diesel powered sells around 139, electric big rigs, depending, can cost two or three times as much. And Auto Week knows what they're talking about. Oh, no, it was Freight Waves. It might have been over here. Yeah, they said it'll cost around 300,000 based on their revenue projections. And I did ask our resident expert in the comments before the show uh, what prices he had heard. And it seems like I had trouble finding. I found numbers all over the place, all different. It goes through the dealer network. Nicholas are sold through a dealer network and they charge what they charge. He found sellers in, in New York who were charging 470,000 and that's just them taking advantage of buyers who can get that $180,000 discount, which is terrible. But it's business, I guess. That's how we do it. So they're going to be expensive and if everyone else is selling for 300, 400,000, it doesn't make sense for Tesla to sell for 180,000, which is pretty lousy for their early adopters. I hope there are some customers who do get the price that they reserved at because come on. So let's talk about the bones of contention, the big brains on Twitter, woke zombie. What's the battery weigh? 50,000 pounds? What type of range does it get under full load? A hundred miles? To which Ailing for Ale says, the real question is how much is it to replace the battery when it goes kaput or has an issue not covered under warranty? That would be my worry. To which I said, well, the real question is how much is it to replace the diesel motor when it goes kaput or has an issue not covered under warranty? That would be my worry. FYI, it's 20 to 40 grand to rebuild a diesel motor. And I did have people respond to me saying, uh, it can be quite a bit more than that. Crypto Daddy says, you usually get well over a million miles before you have to worry about a rebuild. Well, that's good. That's good. It's not true, but it's good. I didn't find any, I did quite a bit of research and the longest I could find was about 800,000 miles, which is still good. If only... They could make a million mile battery. It sounds familiar. I feel like I've heard that somewhere before. EVs are simple. They're easy to maintain. All of that works. <sighs> the comments get dumb. But let's talk about just oil changes in a semi, which can cost anywhere from 200 to 425 dollars. A good estimate is 300 bucks. And you should be doing that every 10,000 to 20,000 miles. It says, do not go past 25,000. And if you're saying, 
uh, your exceptional maintenance, a million miles. You're doing it every 10,000 miles. That's $30,000 just in oil changes. 30 grand in oil changes. Ah, but the Twitter brilliance doesn't stop there because they let anyone make an account and boy, does it show. Here's why you're talking BS. She's referring to me directly. The motor is not replaced after X hours. It's replaced after X miles. Because I said, well, overhauls, yeah, 6,000 miles, they recommend serious engine maintenance. Uh, 6,000 hours, which I said, you know, 40 hours a week, that's three years. And uh, she said, well, it's usually around 200,000 miles for a motor replacement if it's well-maintained, and my German-made truck can go a half million with regular maintenance. Again, regular maintenance. So there is an advantage to not driving, but just idling, but just barely. If the motor's running, the motor's running it's wearing down, sitting still. So you have to deal with these things. And again, regular maintenance. Electric motors do break. Bearings need replacement. Then again, and I assure you, this is how clever the Twitter sphere is. Then again, a gas tank does not need replacement. You're comparing the gas tank to the battery? So, uh, for those who don't know, um, you should be comparing the motor, the engine, to the battery. There is no equivalent to the transmission, to the, you know, transaxle, to the, to the, to the drive shaft, all that. But the battery is the powerhouse of the electric vehicle. Replacing an electric motor is very easy. It's probably, on a semi, it'll probably be an hour or two of labor and a part that's a few thousand dollars. Very easy very quick and it's got three motors and it doesn't need all three to run batteries need to be replaced every two to ten years depending on how much you respect the charge cycle okay well that's that's straight crazy talk is what that is two to ten years i said electric motors are not prone to failure they're exceptionally simple and your understanding of battery degradation is woefully out of date and sounds like it's based mostly on the nissan leaf so, even more important than taking good care of your battery in terms of your charging habits is thermal management, which the Nissan LEAF, first generation, famously did not have. The batteries would get very, very cold and very, very hot because they were air-cooled. And it led to exceptional degradation, 10, 20% in the first three, four years. That's not good. And these were low-mileage cars because... You only had 100 miles of range. Nobody's road tripping in one. So let's look at that. This is for the Model S and X, the mileage versus remaining battery capacity. So let's look at 150,000 kilometers, which is 93,000 miles. You've still got almost 93% of your battery, a little over 93. But this starts with 85%. So let's look at it flattened. This is what it actually looks like. That's how much battery you have left after even 250,000 kilometers, just about all of it. You've got battery life. You got battery life for days. In the semi, battery life, if lithium based batteries barely doubled in the last 10 years, see originally she'd said, there's been no improvement. And I said, no, there's been chemistry manufacturing improvements, which have led to steep declines in cost, improvements in uh, power density and, you know, all. Well, if it's barely doubled in the last 10 years, barely doubling is really good. The lithium technology is facing a huge wall where barely an improvement has been made since 2020. Show me a peer-reviewed article slash paper that I'm wrong. Happy to help. Now, I didn't give an article because those people always say, oh, well, that, I don't like that source. And I didn't give a video because I wouldn't watch a video and I wouldn't expect a stranger to either. I linked to the 4 million mile battery is now reality. And this is real. This is Jeff Don, a team of researchers led by Professor Jeff Don. Does that name sound familiar out there? It should. He's the Tesla Canada chair. He runs a research department at a university 
where they do nothing but work on battery technology. Did you know the 4 million mile battery is here? Because it is. Could work 20 years in stationary storage or 4 million miles of driving. That's a lot of cycle life. Uh, interestingly, she did get pretty quiet after that, like completely silent after that, because this is the real deal. This isn't uh, theoretical. This is the research group that has led to the breakthroughs and innovations that Tesla is enjoying today. This is real. I do want to thank my patrons who get early access, bonus content, and ad-free experience in many cases and uh, help keep the channel running. You know, I can't do it without you guys. It's a small investment, and I thank you guys for making it. And because I was uh, so uh, unavailable during the pre-show, I had to, I was asked for proof. And this is us at the pumpkin patch today. And if you're following me on Twitter, you've already seen this. So let's get into that Q well, there it is, and it's there you go. You this has been the condensed version. If you want to go back and see the whole uncut 30-ish minute version on the second channel, go to My Tesla Live, link in the description, all that good stuff. Huge thanks, as always, to my Patreons who get early access, bonus content, a bunch of other good stuff, and access to my 11-year production prediction tracker at the $10 level and above. So, what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me all your thoughts, your wisdom, your juicy ideas, your blind and brilliance into them in the comments below. And stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the other side.